In this video we're going to look at how to find the gradient of a line. The gradient of a line is a measure of how steep it is and it's defined as rise over run. The letter we use for gradient is m, so m equals rise over run. In other words, how high up a line goes, so this is the line, if I want to measure how steep this line is, I calculate its rise, so how far it's gone up, and I divide it by its run, how far it goes across by. So you do the rise divided by the run. Some people call it change in y divided by change in x, in other words, the change in y is the rise and the change in x is the run. Or the pr proper formula, which you will use a lot on A-level, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in other words, if you've got two coordinates, the first one being x1, y1, and the second one being x2, y2, you're going to do y2 minus y1, well that gives you the rise, taking the, the height of this one away from this one, it gives you the rise. And x2 minus x1, well x2 minus x1 would give you the run, and you do rise divided by run. Let's look at a couple of examples now. Okay, so here I've drawn a diagonal line, and we're going to calculate its gradient. Now the gradient again is m is rise divided by run. So, whenever you get in the gradient of a line, the first thing you want to do is find two coordinates or two points the line clearly goes through. Now I'm going to use this point here. I'm going to use this point here, okay? These two points, it, the line clearly goes through those points, okay? I wouldn't use this one here because it's not on the corner, it's not on one of the corners of the grid, okay? You'd want to use an exact coordinate like there, or maybe there, or maybe there, or there, but you wouldn't use this point, for instance, okay? So these two points are quite good points. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a little triangle. So we make it into a little right angle triangle. So you go across, and then you go up, like so, and then you write down the rise and the run. So the rise is one, two, three, four, five, six. It goes six up, and the run is one, two. So we're going to do rise six divided by run two, and six divided by two is three. So the gradient or the steepness of this line is three. And what that actually means is, being this gradient is 3, means that for every one square you go across, so if we go across one, it goes up 1, 2, 3. If you go across another one, it goes up 1, 2, 3. Okay, so for instance, this point, if you go across one, it goes up 1, 2, 3. Okay, so that's what the gradient represents. Okay, it represents for every one you go across to the right, how many up or down the line would go. Okay, this time we're going to work out the gradient of this line. So again, you find two points the line clearly goes through. Um, I'm going to choose this point here, and I'll choose this point here, okay? And then you draw your little right angle triangle. So you go across, and then you go up. The rise, in this case, is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And the run is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the gradient is 4 divided by 8. Because that's a fraction, you can just cancel it down to be equal to 1 over 2 or a half. Okay? So the gradient of this line is a half. That means for every 1 you go across, you go up a half. Go across 1, up a half. Go across 1, go up a half. Go across 1, go up a half. Okay, so that means the gradient of this is 3. And if we compare it to the previous one, obviously the gradient of this one was a half, this one was 3. As you can see, this line is a lot steeper than this line. So the larger the gradient, so 3, very steep, a half, not as steep, okay? So the larger the gradient, the steeper the line. Obviously, for instance, it would mean you go across one, and if you go up a large number, it's going to be steeper. Okay, I'm now going to actually show you a bit of a cheat. Uh, so rather than doing the two coordinates, we're actually going to use the across one method. Do you remember if the gradient was three, that means if you go across one, you go up three, and so on. So let's see. So we started off at this point. If we go across one, we got one, two. So it means the gradient for this line is equal to two. So let's check if we go across one, we got one, two. If we go across one, you got one, two. So the gradient of this line is two. Okay, now that's really handy. Uh, two bits of uh, two bits of advice. So one is whenever it's um, it doesn't go across one and through an actual coordinate. You know, so for instance, you know the previous example whenever it was a half, it's actually better to do rise of a run then. Okay. Um, also, um, just make sure in your graph that the numbers along the x-axis are one. Okay, so make sure you're going across by one. Okay. Okay, this time we're going to calculate the gradient of a line that goes down. If a line goes down, it's going to have a negative gradient. Okay, so for instance, if it's going across and then down, across and then down, it's going to have a negative gradient. Whereas this one, 
had a positive gradient because it was going up the ways. This one will have a negative gradient. So, uh, first of all, again, choose two coordinates. So let's choose this one, say, and this one. Okay. So if you were to make a little triangle, so go across one, you would then go down three. So the run is one, but the rise, it goes down one, two, three. So the rise is minus three. So the gradient is the rise, which is minus three divided by the run, one. And minus three divided by one is minus three. So the gradient of this line is minus three. Or if we would use the cheat method, if you go across one, you go down one, two, three. Actually, they're across one method. So if you go across one, you go down three, so the gradient is minus three. Let's just compare that to the line that goes up by three. Okay, so this one, you go across two and up six. So you make a triangle, you do rise over run. Same thing for this one, you do your triangle, going across one and down three, so the gradient would be minus three. Okay, let's have a look at some exam questions. Okay, they've been asked to calculate the gradient of the line A. So remember, gradient is rise divided by run. Okay, so let's choose two coordinates to go through. So it clearly goes through the origin, the line A, and it also goes through this point here. Okay, so we make a little right angle triangle. Go up like so. It goes one across, so the run is one, and the rise is one, two, three. So the gradient is rise, three, divided by run, 1, 3 divided by 1 is 3, so the gradient of this line is 3. Again, using the across 1 method, you could have checked that. If you go across 1, you go up 1, 2, 3. Across 1, you've got 1, 2, 3, so the gradient is 3. Okay, this time we've been asked to calculate the gradient of the line L. Okay, uh, There's actually two coordinates marked on, so I'm actually just going to use these coordinates here. Okay, So, uh, let's make your right angle triangle. Because the line's going down, it's going to have a negative gradient. So, let's just do your triangle. So, it goes across 1, 2, three, four, and it goes down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the rise is minus eight, let's just check that, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the gradient is the rise, minus eight, divided by the run, four, it divide, or minus 8 divided by 4 would be minus 2. So the gradient of this line is minus 2. Let's check it using the cross 1 method. If we go across 1, we go down 2. So the gradient is minus 2. Okay, this time we've been asked to calculate the gradient of the line QP or PQ. Okay, so again, choose two points that it goes to, uh, two points it goes through. Uh, so I'm going to choose, actually, I'm going to use Q and I'm going to use P. Okay, so make your right angle triangle. So go across and up. Okay, the run is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the run 6 and the rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, let's just check that. Yep, okay, so remember the gradient is rise divided by run. So the rise is 8 and the run is 6. And 8 divided by 6, well, I'm just going to simplify this fraction. So it's going to give me the answer of 4 thirds. So that means for every 1 you go across, you go up 4 thirds. That's 1 and a third, 1 and a bit. And as you see, if you go across 1, you go up 1 and a bit. That's why the across 1 method for this one wouldn't be as good, because it's a bit hard to judge if you go across 1, actually how much you're going up, it's 1 and a bit. Uh, whereas if you actually use the method, you can actually tell it's 4 and a th uh, four thirds, which is obviously 4 thirds is going to be 1 and a third. Okay, So either one of the answers would do, though, you can give it as 4 thirds or 1 and a third.